What up? Hello! Hi. We're crashing. Yes. Three girls, one mission. To hit as many New York bookstores as we can. What are your guys' top picks for today? What are you looking for? What are we seeking? Seeking poetry, nonfiction, anything I can annotate, and anything that will help with the 10 books, 10 decades challenge. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good this one. Cat. Oh my god, I didn't introduce them! <laughs> <laughs> this is Imana from Imana in the City. And this is Kat <laughs> from Lit with Kat. Hello. And they are the booktube... The barrio. <laughs> no, you're trying to make it work. But yeah, what was your pick? Well, Toni Morrison, uh -huh. Annie Arno. Annie Arno's a good one. Any books for the 10 books, 10 decades, that's a good one. Okay. And I think I'm just looking for Iris Murdoch. So we have our plan. Yeah. So one, two, three, break. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, break. <laughs> This little gem was established in 2018. Codex Books lies in the East Village and it's a mostly used bookstore with a sprinkling of new releases who mainly focuses on literary fiction and some art books. Okay, second spot we hit up, Mercer Books. This place has been around since the 90s. She lives in Greenwich Village. This sounds so rude. <laughs> it's definitely a place to add to your list if you're looking exclusively for some used books or some records. Okay, my absolute favorite place of the day, You and Me Books. She's a pandemic baby bookstore opening her doors in 2021. You and Me is the first Asian American woman owned bookstore in New York City, and Lucy, the owner, is 28. That's pretty badass. She is living our dream. You and Me is a bookstore slash cafe slash bar slash community space in Chinatown with a selection that focuses on immigrant stories and authors of color.
ton of fun. I really enjoyed having them over. It's always just so nice to spend time with friends and stranger danger is not a thing. We gotta let our parents know. I adore used book shopping, even more so than just like going to regular bookstores. I think there is something so romantic about shopping for used books. It's like you're just slowing down, you're touching spines, and sort of the idea that, especially when you're used bookstore shopping, that this is in relation to someone else and you can sort of feel that person or that relation through like the yellowing of the pages, whether they're like scribbles in the margin. Sometimes I find images in books. I really dig it. I think it's also the delight of like, you have something in your head that you might be looking for, but sort of the destination of used bookstore shopping is that it's your intention plus whatever is out there. And that sort of mysterious middle ground is always just like really fun to arrive at. Anyway, if you like book shopping, dude, that's why we're all here. So <laughs> let me stop going on and on. So there was one bookstore that we went to that I actually didn't film. It's called Book Off, which is in Midtown. And that's like a Japanese chain, I believe. And they have like used DVDs, CDs, games, collectibles. And then on their upper level, they have just like a floor of used books. So at Book Off, I got Melissa Broder's The Pisces. I feel like I've heard about this book everywhere. I listened to Milk Bed. I tried the first time and I couldn't really get into it. I was a little bit triggered by it, not gonna lie. And then I listened to it again and I was really able to get into it. And I enjoyed it a lot. I recently heard Yana raving about The Pisces. Not raving about it, but the way that she described it made me want to like pick it up. So I actually added it to my, I have a little notes app on my phone, Use Book Archive. And I just, because I will forget. And Goodreads, I feel like is not a good way to like <laughs> in the moment when you're book shopping like go through it to find what it is that you have intended to look for anyway it's on my notes app and i came across it so i was really excited for this one i'm gonna stack them here so then we went to codex found some good ones actually this one is thanks to cat <laughs> cat found the bluest eye and i like <laughs> snatched it from her grasp no but she didn't want it what was your pick well tony morrison <laughs> But this beautiful edition of The Bluest Eye, there's one edition of Stula that if I find it, I might like break down and cry. It's the one with like the woman who has a dress and is like sitting like this. I really want it, but I think this one is beautiful as well. So yeah, I will be adding it to this little collection. And then the other book that I found, so I was watching Alex's video and she mentioned this book. Okay, let's just, let me prep you now. The cover, I know, I know. <laughs> you wouldn't pick it up, I wouldn't pick it up, but it's called Fear of Flying by Erica Jong. So initially I heard her speak about it and I was like, oh, that sounds super interesting. I want it. Went on thrift books and every single cover I saw was ugly. So anyway, I was doing as you do at a used bookstore and I like turned and then I saw <laughs> the spine and I was like, wait, Wait, I flipped open and someone had left these like bright pink underlines in the text and they had picked some really mm, interesting parts <laughs> and I was immediately in. So I was excited to find this in the wild. I don't know that I would have picked it up otherwise and immediately started reading it, immediately fell into it. I think I got a little bit intimidated by the length of it because I have been on a teeny streak, but I think I'm going to return to it. So yeah. Fear of Flying by Erica Jones. Okay, it's compared to Tropic of Cancer. I don't know, I don't know how to describe it because I'm trying to be PG here, but just I guess trust. So those were the two books I got at Codex. Then we made our way over to Mercer Books. That is a fully used bookstore. It has a bunch of records and then there are like classics, rare editions, and other used books. The last time I went to Mercer, they had a ton of like Otessa Mosh bag and a lot of like recently published books, which I, I thought was really interesting. I keep looking for Iris Murdoch. For some reason, I think of it as like one of these books that I, I should be able to find out of like a little free library and I kind of want a used edition, but I haven't, I haven't seen it once. But yeah, I thought it was interesting that a used bookstore had so many like recently published editions of books. The last time I got like housekeeping and I got something else that was pretty contemporary. And this time I found, what are you going through? By Sigrid Nunez. So I recently just read The Friend, but I got this before I read The Friend, also because of Yena. In one of her wrap ups, she was talking about really enjoying this book. And in anticipation of also loving Sigrid, I picked it up once I saw it. So really excited to read this, especially after reading The Friend. I really like Nunez's style of writing. So very excited to pick this one up. Also got Marilyn Robinson Gilead. And yeah, I got housekeeping. I started it. Anyway, I got housekeeping last time. I haven't read it yet, but I read the first few pages and I really liked the writing style. And I also feel like this one is a classic kind of. So I picked it up. I'm excited to read it. 
And the last book I got, which I actually have seen a lot of, I think, more negative reviews than positive, but I, I want to decide on my own. So that is, no one is talking about this by Patricia Lockwood. I, it's written in fragmentary style, and I feel like most, I don't know, I feel like there was a lot of hype around it, then the more people started to read it, the more people started to dislike it. I don't know if it was being compared to her previous book, Priest Daddy, but I'm just curious. I want to come to an opinion for myself on Miss Lockwood, so that was another find. These are the little gems that I found at Mercer. And finally, this is the one I was most excited for. So then we took the train down to Chinatown and we went to You and Me Books. I haven't been to You and Me. I am like, it's kind of unacceptable, but what a cute little gem of a bookstore. I really like bookstores that try to become community spaces as well. One that I really love is Word Up in Uptown. I really like that they hold tons of events and it's really trying to become a community space. You and Me has that same feel. They have like a bar cafe there's this like little reading nook that is so so cute there are like three comfy chairs in this tiny little enclave <laughs> and the book selection was excellent the vibe was excellent yeah and I just I really love the energy the feel of that place I think that was like my favorite that we went to although it wasn't a used bookstore they had a nice used section but again it, it wasn't a used bookstore but I think just for this they have just like put themselves up there in terms of favorite bookstores in the city. I mean, I think I already felt pretty confident in saying that they were a favorite, but while I was there, I found After the Winter by Guadalupe Netel. I didn't know this was out. <laughs> I didn't know this was a thing. When I saw this little name on that spine, baby, I got so excited. Yeah, and I, I really like the, it kind of looks like the fits Carald. Oh, I don't know why I can't say that, but it kind of looks like their editions, but it's published by Coffee House Press. I love Coffee House Press books. I mean, I don't I don't need the publisher to indicate that I would love her because I already do. I'm in deep love with Guadalupe Netel. Cute little bookmark they gave us. I want to, I mean, I don't even know if I should share the, the epigraph. Yeah, I sat down in one of the comfy chairs there and I started reading it and I was immediately in. I think Rosalind Harvey is a great translator for Netel's work. I feel like the least amount of chafing <laughs> between the original, what I assume to be the original intention of the text and how it comes out in the translation when I read Harvey's iterations of Netel's work. So I am super excited. This one, as you can tell, there were a lot of great books and I was just like, I want to, I want to nestle with this one. But there were a couple of books that I had to get to before, but I had this one literally on the top and I look at her every day longingly with tons of desire I cannot wait to get to her so that I think that was just like the coolest find because it's pretty aligned with my reading at the moment and I didn't know that I was looking for it and I feel like usually when I go to regular bookstore or like bookstores <laughs> I don't know you're looking for like something that's been recently published but I feel like this is not also well known in the states so I am just ecstatic yeah that was my little <laughs> you and me book haul find all in all I would say we were successful <laughs> yeah I haven't really purchased many books because if you saw my booktube newbie tag you know that I have piles and piles and piles everywhere in this apartment and I'm constantly trying to unhaul some books and I really I don't have space for many but I think when bookish friends come to visit you and you are doing some bookstore crawls it just calls for some new acquisitions all right that's it I really hope you enjoyed our little <laughs> adventures through the city tell me what city you're from and what your favorite bookstore is in your city so whenever I do go to new cities I love going to bookstores and getting books there and then I sort of immortalize that. Um, so in case I do visit your city, let me know uh, where you live. Don't tell me like your address. <laughs> Stranger danger. But tell me what city you live in and tell me your favorite bookstore there. But I think that's it. Bye.